Let's go. <laughs> Oh, I have to do a silent thing. Okay. Where? No, because it's so special, right? Oh. My face is so pretty. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to see it. Oh, yeah. I'm not um, it's gonna have the that table back there, in the last seats. You just stand there and there's just sign in sheets and you just ask everybody. Oh, Sometimes people, they just... Don't answer, don't Yeah, like, like E and A and M. Oh, I want to show your face. Oh, my face? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh ah. -huh. Ah. Uh ah. -huh. Ah. Uh ah. -huh. Wow. Yeah, just show me some move. Um, show me some. Hmm. Oh, Put it on. Oh, dude, you want me? I'll show you something really nice. Our next speaker is Susie Jun. She is a student at Laces High School and a student leader of the Korean Research Center's youth group, who is in strong support of the DREAM Act. Susie Jun is a student of the secondary Laces and is a leader of the group Juvenil Orange, which is part of the center of the course of Korean. Susie is a great ally of the ACTA DREAM. We all start out with dreams. However, some dreams are more attainable than others simply because of immigration status. The DREAM Act was created to eliminate these unnecessary barriers so everyone can have a chance to go to college and get a job of their choice. It, the struggle to see our dreams come true has been in the works for six years. It has been led by the very people that someday hope to contribute back to the society that, which has given so much to them in the first place. The Korean Resource Center's ORANGE, which stands for Organize, Rise Up, Act and Get Empowered, has been deeply involved in the process of organizing for the DREAM Act. ORANGE is a youth-led and youth-oriented group um, that has been lending all their focus to the DREAM Act for almost two and a half years. We are a collection of both immigrant and US-born youth working towards the passage of the bill. We believe that immigrant students Third Street Elementary. Good afternoon, annyeonghaseyo, buenos dias. Uh, my name is Susie O, oh, and uh, uh, I love my job as the principal of this fabulous school, Third Street School. Um, uh, me llamo Susie O, oh, uh, yo soy la directora de escuela aquí. Uh, my Spanish used to be much better when I was an assistant principal at a predominantly Latino school, but now, um, I practice more English and Korean at my current school. I just want to say that as a public school educator for the last um, 30 plus years, that I'm a strong believer that in that every student has a birthright to be educated. The 21st century workforce requires college education, and the college education is essential <coughs> to contribute to this society. I believe that all students, regardless of their parents' status or their status, uh, sh should be able to aspire to the American dream as, as our Statue of Liberty. Raise your hand, Statue of Liberty. <laughs> as our Statue of Liberty uh, welcomes the tired, the poor, and our, as American as apple pie. Our nation was uh, built on uh, the backs of uh, immigrants, and our future depends on them as well. Fight on. Thank you. Going on for a very long time, like nothing, well not, there hasn't been a bill so far that's been helping students. And personally, I know a lot of my friends 
where they're they're in high school. They just recently figured out they're undocumented, and then they're starting to figure out they're restricted. They can't get a driver's license after they graduate um, high school. If they're lucky, they're able to um, get into college with no one knowing. But then after college, when you're going there applying for jobs, they're like, yeah, so what's your social security number? And they're like, oh crap. So a lot of them, they have to work in like, I don't know, maybe downtown where they don't check. And so a lot of them who had dreams of being doctors or whatever, they can't do it now. So. So if I can add, it's been actually a process of like six years. Um, we saw earlier 2001 mm -hmm. was when the bill introduced and what's very, special about it, about like the organizing safe place, it's all like young people, it's all you guys. Well, that's a very good question. It's kind of like, if you talk to people about it, like, you know, they have no idea, or some people don't really care, because who would actually go out and say, yeah, I'm undocumented, you know, I came here illegally, you know, mm -hmm. so. Well, and, um, you know, like the Congress, they're pretty uh, conservative. And uh, they've been kind of saying, oh, no, Dream Act, because that just means that they're, you know, the punishments for the people who came here undocumented in the first place, they're not going to have any, like, you know, they're not being punished. So they're, they don't want to pass the Dream Act. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like innocent kids, you know, they, they didn't come here by choice. You know. The good thing is that, um, from what we hear about from Congress people, is that um, in reality, the Dream Act is a very small bill. Like 65,000 students, it's not really a lot. Maybe that just means we have to think of that for ourselves. We know what Dream Act is now, so what are we going to do about it? How are we going to make more people in our community know about it? So as we're going through this, maybe, you know, keep that in your head. And again, we can talk a little bit about that. All right, um, any more questions? Good. Okay, um, and as you guys all know, you're all probably wondering what orange is. So I'll explain well, that. Okay. And get empowered. Orange is a Korean American youth membership organization that seeks to empower youth and the larger community. We spread awareness and advocate for immigrant rights and social justice, but above all, a change in today's society. We believe this vision is possible by educating ourselves, organizing, being actively involved with our community, and working in solidarity with other allied communities. Which, yeah, you guys. Then. Um, we provide a safe and open. Well, yeah, we provide a safe and open space for all youth, regardless of race, class, gender, sexual orientation, religion, or culture. Yay. You guys are cool. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, but, and, I got lost um, when you said we. <laughs> well, well you can read it. <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> this is like a really like sensitive subject, so. Um, and also like this girl is like really kind of like family too because like you're just really welcome here. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. You have to say something because you passed. We are united. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hannah, do you want to say something? <laughs> Love you. Yeah, I like her. Anything. Have you guys heard about that? Briefly. Basically, we're sending them a postcard. Like in the front, there's like a picture, um, kind of something to move the Congress members and stuff to like you know pass the dream and do something about it. And also, we're doing call in actions, which means we we like go around, tell people, oh, call your senators, you know, call your representatives, tell them there's this dream act, they have to pass it. And you know, if we're lucky, we won't have so many people calling them that they won't say, okay, this is important, the people want it. So, and also, we have an Asian American Lobby Day, in Washington D.C. Though I'm not an expert in that, but <laughs> yeah. Also. Um, we're trying to do like you know other actions, maybe if we're lucky in DC and stuff to show them like we support Dream Act, support Dream Act. And the reason why we're going to DC is if you say anybody who wants to, anyone who supports. So you know you, we could bring our friends, you know we could go. But then who's gonna like 
Going to college. You're in the middle of some greatest people. Not me. She's a photographer. So basically, um, we're trying to like show, and this is also showing, you know, we all have like, you know, dreams, and the dollar you know, students is like, you know, we all have like, you know, dreams, and the undocumented students, it's like, people are talking. We, um, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Um, we outreach, we do, um, we have what we're trying to form right now is a Kasama group. Like, we're in our lonely group, we have our own tasks and stuff where we do things with the community around. Like, we do things where we talk about issues around the co around the community, like teen pregnancy and um, like smoking. And right now we're doing a campaign for TRL. Yeah. What does it stand for? TRL stands for it's a black for retail licensing. T R L. So what's that about? It's like we're trying to give all the dealers, all the people that that retail tobacco cigarettes, to tobacco have to get a license because in in this area, or in other areas, are like this is where like dealers can give anybody a cigarette like they're not even eighteen years old. Just go. Can I get a cigarette? All right, then. All right here's um, the money. All right, that's it. Just, they don't check your ID. They just give it to you just to make money, something like that. Yeah. We do a lot of things, too. We're fun. We could, like, go next. Okay, like, fine. John. Really, John? Okay. Um, that's my idea, son. SIPA. I'll go to SIPA. It's a nonprofit organization that is based on helping kids. Like or people with low income ho or help people with low income housing. Um, it's basically a place where um, teenagers and kids go after school to like do homework and like just f have fun with their friends. Um, we're part of FISTS. Um, it stands for Forming Independent Student Thinkers at CPOT. Um, yeah, like what he said, we work on TRL. And this morning we were just at the what was it? Business licensing commission. Yeah, what she said. Um, <laughs> and uh, they did a presentation so that the mini board head board of supervisors. Yeah, board of supervisors would um, make a <laughs> make a um, <laughs> recommendation to the <laughs> higher people to pass TRL and um, while we were there like we we saw all the people who were for us and um, they actually passed the recommendation so yeah it was good yeah. next month which is tomorrow um, we're gonna talk about um, about sex trafficking teenage pregnancy and um, what's other one? women rights because yeah and what else basically we just like this we want people we want you to get empowered and like knowledge about their community and that's what fist does uh fist is well um what i do in sipa is like wait wait basically um sipa is like a community based organization well where they put um where they bring together all kids from elementary to high school and we have this one big like place for them to hang out, you know, spend time with their friends, 
like kick it and we have all these activities for them and us the fists we um we help well we're ma we're basically um uh like a like a high school kind of like you know oh my god um <laughs> high, <laughs> high school <laughs> like club well high kind of oriented? well high school oriented club there and we talk about like all these issues and we try to um we try to update them and what's happening around our community and all that. Yeah. And yeah, we we're trying to update them with the what's happening around and we're trying to help them to get their voice to be heard because like um as a little like young kid your voice are not often to be heard by grow, grown up because they will, they'll be like, oh, you're too little, you can't just sit and listen and all this stuff. So then um, we trying to get like young kids involved in the community so their voice could be heard. Because sometimes kids have good ideas too, not only like adults have good ideas. Um. So basically, SIPA, our mission is to enhance the quality of life of Filipino Americans and other um, folks of different racial ethnic backgrounds through programs and services. And so um, it's a youth and family resource center. So our programs range from low income housing to small business workshops to case management, counseling, and then our after school enrichment programs. And so FIS is under our after school enrichment programs, and it's like our youth leadership. Um, group at SIPA and so um, we have interns and they lead their own um, youth club organization and so that organization is completely youth led. They work on any topic that they want to work on um, and they plan everything, they coordinate every single meeting. Um, huh? Oh, okay. And so one of the campaigns like what they said is our tobacco retail license campaign and then um, we were also interested in um, jumping on board with the DREAM Act campaign because we feel that this is something that definitely affects the Filipino um, American community, um, especially since we're like the second largest Asian Pacific Islander community in Los Angeles. And so, and many of which are undocumented, right? A lot of our members are actually undocumented. And so, <laughs> <laughs> But well, we're not going to out anyone, right, <laughs> Chad? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyways, so um, in a nutshell, that's what they do. Did you want to add something? No, no, no. Oh, okay. So, um, any questions? Um, yeah. Um, in your campaign, like, what do you guys do? Oh, For the tobacco retail lesson? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Go okay, we do this um, sting operation, right? Which, like, um, a, young, a kid, like, a youth and an adult walk in, um, like a kid walk in the um, walk in a store, like a random store, and ask for a cigarette. The adult just uh, like supervising the adult, like and the kid not supposed to like act. act they don't know each other, mm -hmm. and then the kid gonna ask for um, the retail. Basically, cigarette. we're just like we're gonna pretend we're gonna buy cigarettes and we're just gonna see if they're actually gonna sell it to us. But we don't get it. Yeah, yeah we, we don't. don't. We, we and don't. if they actually do, we're just gonna say like, oh, I'm sorry, my money's not enough or something. And then we'll like, after that, we'll fill up a survey saying, yeah. oh, they did and they did. I mean, we're not gonna like, tell the police, oh, yeah, we're selling tobacco. Oh, you should, <laughs> yeah. We're not going to be like that. We're just going to, like, like sign a survey, and then probably we'll, we're just going to get the statistics of yeah. how many retailers sell around the L.A. County. We just want the percent.